Let's look at how to analyze the noise produced by a camera's sensor. We need to play with the ISO settings for this, and it's true that the highest quality images are the ones with the lowest noise. At the same time, high levels of noise aren't necessarily bad until it becomes a distraction. And the threshold for that is for you to decide. The setup for this test is simple. We just need a well-lit subject like this guitar. I'll turn the lens to manual focus so that we don't accidentally shift the focus during the test. ISO will be the main variable. We want to fix the aperture to a single value, not wide open, but perhaps a few stops down. In this case, I'll choose f5.6. We'll be testing ISOs in one-stop intervals from 100 through to the maximum. And in my case, that's 51,200 and we'll compensate for ISO changes using shutter speeds in one-stop intervals. That way, the resultant exposure will be identical every time. We've got the pictures up on the big screen, and now we can pixel peep. I don't mind pixel peeping during a camera test because it means that I don't have to pixel peep when I'm reviewing any portrait session that I do afterwards. My assumptions going into a test like this is that ISO 100 will be the cleanest image, and everything else would be a compromise. But now that I've done the test, I see that's clearly not the case. If I go into my ISO 100 image, this is the cleanest it's going to be. I can see details on the guitar's pickboard, all these little tiny scratches. And I see those at ISO 200, 400, they're there at 800, and even at 16. It's when we get to ISO 3200 that the noise starts to take over and mask those tiny details. And that's good to know. So ISO 1600 and lower, I get fantastic detail in the image. And even at 3200, I'm still getting color like the green oxidation on the brass saddles of the guitar. But as I go up, to 6400, I'm starting to lose that color definition. 12,800, and it's going. And by the time we get to 25,600, the grain really has taken over and these pictures aren't really usable anymore. But even though at 51,200, we've completely decimated the picture with noise, there's still something quite cool about it. It would have a place as a grainy, contrasty black and white image, for example. So I'd like to think there are three categories of noise. There are the range of settings that give me fantastic results without compromise, all the way from 100 to 1600. Very happy with those images. Then there's the range of settings that I would use in emergency situations, like if I was shooting event photography and didn't mind a little bit of grain, especially if I'm not gonna be cropping into the pictures. And for the type of pictures that I like to make, I think the grain would be unacceptable after 25,600. And that range of acceptable noise is way bigger than I would have thought before I made the test. And again, this all depends on your own sensor and tolerances to noise. Let's say we didn't do the test. If we only looked at the graphs available online, here we are on photons to photos, and I've pulled up the noise graph for the same camera I've been using for the test, the Canon R5. Here it shows that ISO 100, and again at 400 we have low noise levels, but it suggests that at 200 the noise levels are elevated. If I'd have only looked at this graph, I would have avoided using ISO 200, thinking that I would be getting worse results than 100 or 400. But now that I've run the tests, I've realized those little details are insignificant. The noise for me is fine until I get to 1600. The charts are useful, but they don't replace doing our own tests. We need to explore our own tolerances with our own images.